Mike Life here on Route 18 in Tim Falls, maybe, not sure exactly, but now that I have this new bike, I can go on cool highways like this. I'm sure the audio sucks, being that I can't even hear myself because this helmet's the worst and no air goes through it. I don't know if you guys can see, oh, never mind, the sun hit back behind the clouds, but I couldn't see a damn thing. The sun was blinding me because my mirrors are set up. Oh, real nice. But, you know that, now that I can ride on these highways, I don't think I like them riding on these highways. I like being able to do speed and I like being nice and quiet. But, I definitely, I don't know. I have mixed emotions about these highways or interstates. This is a route. I guess a route would be an interstate. I don't know. But I know it's like, so windy and there's like no wind at all anywhere else in the world. I know it's so loud and there's like it's not loud anywhere else in the world. I know I only have a t-shirt and like doing 71 miles an hour so it's like if I fall it'll, it'll feel pretty good. But I think I want to give a couple reasons on why I would not ride on these interstates or the parkway or the turnpike every day, but rather just every now and then. Ooh, it's nice and cold over here. It's like a chilly kind of cold over here, actually. Where's my muscles look big in the, in the side view? You see me flexing? But, yeah, anyway, I wouldn't want to ride on roads like this because of reasons like that. at such high speeds, no one looks, they just want to make sure that they're getting up to speed and that they're coming onto the highway. So that's one of the, one of the big dangers of riding on these interstates is people verging in or people leaving the highway and say they're stuck all the way in the left lane and they come into the right lane. Yeah, that could be spooky. So. That's one of the reasons why. Another reason why is that when you add speed, and then you add cell phones, and then you add distractions in the car, and then you add babies, and then you add another driver. When you add all these other distractions on the road, it's just a recipe for disaster. So, not only does distracted driving kill riders like us, but it also, you know, is, is doubly, triply, whateverly worse out here on the uh, on the interstates or the highways, whatever you want to call them. Another thing to note about these is the fact that see, this one's merged and this one's merged in that way, so you gotta keep your eyes peeled. Another thing to mention would be the fact that a lot of the people that drive on these highways are coming home from work or going to work, so they're either in a rush just to get home to do nothing, or they're in a rush to get to work. So you got to watch out for those people because they're definitely not watching out for you. They only have one thing on their mind, and that's not being late for work. So keep your eyes on that because I'll do... Like, it, it posts the speed limit at 65. As you can see, I'm doing 70 miles an hour, and people are still passing me as if I'm not even, like, going anywhere. I can do 80, and people will still pass me as if I'm not going anywhere. So, a lot of times with these interstates and these highways, for the sake of this video, we're just going to call them highways because I'm tired of saying both. So, yeah, for the sake of this video, on these highways, the speed limit might be 65. The cops don't start pulling people over until about 80 miles an hour, which is 15 over. And people don't even care about that. They'll still do 85, 90 like it's nothing.
drivers pulled over on the side of the road, either it's off of their cell phone or pulled over because of an accident. So, you know, you have a lot more things to look out for out here than you would on, say, a back road. But the back road really doesn't have this many cars, you know? It's kind of just you against the road. And then with the back roads, you just look out for gravel, deer, etc., etc. But, I mean, the highway still has those things, but it's just less likely. Another, uh, a couple words of advice if you are going to ride on the highway. Ride it with groups. You know, ride with two or three or four people so that you guys are more visible when you're out there. Also, Ride with high-vis gear, like a white helmet or a green helmet, uh, like a reflective jacket or something like that, or an orange jacket, something bright. And then make sure all your lights are working. Make sure your tail light works. Make sure your headlights work before you go out, because the more visible you are, the better off you are. Again, guys, I apologize if the audio is a little messed up, but I'm going 73, not even keeping up with traffic. And this helmet's a dirt bike helmet, essentially. It's a dual sport, but essentially it's a dirt bike helmet. Another word of advice that I can tell people that are going to be starting riding on the highways is either stick to the left lane and go quicker than everyone else, or stick to the right lane and just go a little bit over the speed limit. Just enough so that people aren't ramming into the back of you, but not fast enough to get tickets. So, those are my words of advice and reasons why I try to stay off the highways unless it's every once in a blue moon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button if you're not already. I come out with videos every Thursday. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, no, not Twitter, I don't got Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, at uh, Dorian L. Loss, and then follow me also on um, Facebook and YouTube, as you already know, at NJ Bike Life. See you up there? Popped up, so I'm probably speeding. State Trooper, that's definitely not a wall cop. Yo, let me ask you guys. Who's your favorite YouTube moto vlogger? Like, when I first started watching moto vlogs, I was hooked on Jake the Garden Snake. That was like my dude. And that's kind of why, like, I was stoked that I had an Enduro, even though he had a Supermoto. And, uh,. Then I moved on to like Baker X Derek and like those kind of guys. I started watching uh, Armenian, Baker X Derek. I never got into do it with Dan or Adrian Nickelodeon or those kind of guys. But I did stay a lot with uh, like Jake the Garden Snake, Armenian, Baker X Derek. And then uh, drawing a blank on who the last one that I always watched was. Oh, a rider's life. So, you know, those were the guys that I that I came up with the moto vlogging sense of watching. Now, I literally have like so many moto vloggers that I watch. But my favorite guy as of recently, um, I'm still watching Big Eric's there. I don't really watch Jake the Garden Snake that much. I never got into Yummy R6. My favorite guy as of recently is, um, Suburban Delinquent. His videos, dude. I just love the feel for him, man. Like, his audio is so clear. His quality is good. His, his bike is sick. The places that they go are, are so good. I really like his dude, um, Claws, that he rides with. And his buddy, um, Z. I think they're like... That Claws guy is an absolutely nut. Like, he's crazy. And then Z is like... He's just funny because he's like, he always seems lost all the time, but he's like hilarious. So, that's been my favorite YouTuber to watch. 
the suburban delinquent and like, it, I watch Arson Rise and Big Eric there because they're all in like the same circle. But what's your what's your guys' favorite subscriber? I mean not favorite subscriber, favorite YouTuber that you watch? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Enjoy bike life. See ya!